So today I've got a slightly different video for you all. Today we're going to go back to my first ever Little Nightmares theory, which was actually my first ever theory video at all. And I'm going to go back through and I'm going to rewatch it. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because this was the first theory video I ever made. And uh, I didn't even intend to make any more. This was just something that I, I threw out for fun uh, when Little Nightmares 2 came out and I was sick of making Dead by Daylight content that was just me complaining all the time. So I thought it would be good to go back to my first ever one and uh, kind of critique it. I want to look at something that maybe I've changed my mind on, some things that I, I still think that is true. And I also want to have a bit of a discussion about some of the counterpoints that other people have made around that video and just give a bit of a general discussion on how I feel about my first ever theory video. It's more Little Nightmares content, so you're welcome. The school in Little Nightmares 2 is just as dark and creepy as the rest of the game. However, I think if you scratch just a little bit below the surface, there are a bunch of clues as to what happened here before the events of the second game. I'm going to explain exactly what I think happened in the school before Mono and Six arrived. Obviously, they are only theories. Basically, nothing in these games is absolutely confirmed. Everything is open to interpretation. And this is just my interpretation of the clues that we are being given if you look just a little bit more closely at the environment. So this is something that I said quite a few times with Little Nightmares 1 and 2 and I, uh, I'm really glad that I state it is that uh, we don't really know anything about the world of Little Nightmares. We get given a lot of clues and a lot of um, I don't even want to say hints because at the end of the day there is no real truth in Little Nightmares if you have an interpretation. As long as you've got some evidence for it or some reasoning behind your thinking, it's pretty much valid. And I, I like that. I like that a lot. It's one of the things that drew me to Little Nightmares in the first place is how uh, my headcanon and your headcanon could be completely different. And that's still after making, what, like 10 plus Little Nightmares theory videos at this point, I definitely still I still think that way. If, if you and I disagree, as long as you have some reasoning behind your thinking, then, uh, you know, we both could be right. Or we both could be wrong. Who knows at this point? Moving on, I think that we can see clearly here what happened in the school before Mono and Six arrived. I don't know if you can pick up on this one, but this, this video is unscripted. I think this was the only unscripted theory that I did. And this was because when I started uh, this video, all of my Dead by Daylight videos were unscripted. I just, I liked to talk and I like to talk naturally like this. This is not scripted, this video. And uh, I prefer to do it that way. But I, I quickly realized with theories where you're, you're putting evidence together um that's not really the best way to do it because not only do i forget things that would be really important in the theory sometimes i don't explain myself as well as i could do now i don't i still don't explain myself as well as i could do sometimes with scripts but doing doing videos like this scripted it's not really a clever move and i and i'm glad that i changed that but i can already tell straight away in this video that it's not scripted i wonder if any of you guys like can you pick up on that can you tell the difference between my scripted and my non-scripted let me know down in the comments below. Before I talk about my theory, I have to establish a couple of things. First of all, I do think that the school used to be a normal school for normal humans, and I have a number of reasons why I think that. If we look at the current occupants of the school, there is the creepy teacher who is clearly monstrous. She has the inhuman ability to twist and bend her neck and stretch it for a long, long time. And she also never ever blinks. Now I do think that this is the teacher having the ability to always keep an eye on the children and we'll come into that maybe in another video. But also the children are made out of porcelain. They are clearly not normal human children. And we know that there are normal human children in the world. Well, there's human children anyway. So a couple of points there. First of all, the uh, idea that the school is or was a normal school, uh, I still think that. And I actually, I, I don't think that's just the school. I think the whole world of Little Nightmares was normal at one point. There's a lot of things in Little Nightmares 1 and 2 that seem to be left over. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean just things like left over from the, the disappeared people in, in Little Nightmares 2. I mean, there's a lot of things that none of the of the people in this world seem to care about like they're there for people that don't exist anymore and it really does feel like this world went through some form of apocalyptic event um or or maybe in the other side of it, it you know this world isn't a real world it could be a nightmare world but either way the the rules of this world it seems like the the there's rules for the the real thing things for like people's belongings as an example like why are they here if there's nobody that they belong to. Uh, a good example of that is the the belongings in the school, which I brought up in the video, is uh, like who were the original 
students of this school? Like, who were the original pupils? Because they, they're clearly things left behind by someone. Where did they go? The whole world definitely feels like it's been abandoned and it's now being almost stolen by these monstrous things. It's Or, or maybe that they're kind of taking over it, maybe. Uh, and I still think that. I still think that. A second one, the teacher never blinking. A lot of people have said in the comments, well, a few people have said in the comments, the teacher does blink. I, I've never seen it. I've played this game through four or five times now and I've never seen the teacher blink. Um, it's one of those things where I, I feel like it might be a false memory in people where they believe they've seen the teacher blink. I've never seen a blink. If you have seen a blink, let me know. But I've never seen a blink. And also, the big one that I think proves this to be true is the kitchens. Now, if you go to the kitchens, you can see that it is clearly capable of producing food and there is still food left around. And yet none of the porcelain children seem to want nor need the food. They play with the food. They mess with the food. They even at one point, it looks like they pee in the food. But not at one point do we see any of the porcelain children eat the food. So this was actually a, 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 a few people brought this up um, when I said that, that it looks like the child is peeing in the food. And I actually wasn't as clear as I meant to be. Again, this is a problem with not scripting these videos. What I meant was, is it looks like he's peeing in the food, but he's actually not. Uh, a couple of people said, if these children are made out of porcelain, how do they pee? And I don't think he was peeing at all. I think that the child was uh, copying behavior that he saw somewhere else. If you think about it, all of these children, well, most of these children anyway the porcelain children seem to be very naughty i know some people get triggered when i say that but the, the, these these people seem to these children seem to be very naughty it's almost like they've they've been modeled that way or they've learnt that behavior from somewhere else again i have a theory on that one but they they are all mostly naughty and i think that the idea here was that this child was actually uh, copying behavior that he'd seen somewhere else and was pretending to pee i don't think he was actually peeing in the food uh, but a couple of people got a little bit confused by that one why do we have a fully functioning kitchen? And again, I think this is because they used to be normal human children that used to attend this school. And one of those children, I think, was six. We will get onto that point. Just want to point out here as well, I missed, on my first playthrough, I missed the lunch lady, but a couple of people told me about it. And on my second playthrough, I went back and, and uh, saw the lunch lady and... Um, yeah, the lunch lady is an interesting one. I would have loved to see seen her in person because she looks, uh, or, or should I say alive, because she looks like uh, a little bit, she's definitely monstrous, but I wonder if she would eat the food. I really wish I could find out because if she, if she was under the effects of the hunger or the televisions, that would make a lot of sense, but we don't actually see if she was or not because the teacher doesn't seem to be under the effects of the television and, and half of the, the monstrous monsters don't. Uh, but the people do. So I, it would have been really interesting, but we didn't get to see her alive, unfortunately. Now, this isn't just a random theory. I have evidence to support this one as well. And let's go through that right now. So first of all, if you look at these photographs, there are a number of photographs or picture frames in the school environment. Most of them depict the porcelain children. However, one of them does show what appears to be normal human children. They look I, I got a lot of flack for this one because the uh, quality is not the best. Unfortunately, if you zoom in on any sort of footage, it is going to drop in quality. But not only that, YouTube compression you also get a drop in quality and so on my end on my video you can just about make out what i was trying to show here but on the youtube video it wasn't so great but essentially you have these two photos here and if you go in the game and, and zoom in yourself you will see it a lot easier but you on the run on the right you can clearly see two porcelain children they've got the big over exaggerated faces they've got the fake hair they're absolutely porcelain but the two on the left look way more like normal children. They still look like the porcelain children. They have the same sort of looks, but they look more realistic. And my, my theory here is that those two on the left were the real children and the ones on the right were modeled after them. So either the children were turned into porcelain or the porcelain children were, were crafted with the with the idea of the normal children. I'm not really sure. I don't really think it matters at this point, like wh what which one it was. The idea here though is, is I really do believe that there were normal human children in this school. Well, as normal as they can be in this world. And that really plays into what I think about the chess piece kid, which we will be coming on to shortly look very very similar to the porcelain children and we'll come back to that later but there are also two pictures one of a boy and a girl now the girl does bear a very strong resemblance to six without her raincoat now i wanted to point out a lot of people were questioning whether this was six on the far end on the right again it's very difficult to see and i apologize but 
Uh, it is. There's actually is a picture of six. Now, if you look at the six children in the uh, Little Nightmares 2 artwork, you can see that on the sixth girl, the sixth child, it's six, right? And the haircut has like this sweep, sweepy sort of haircut going on. Uh, so this is a picture of six on the right hand side. Well, it's most likely a picture of six. But what is interesting though is I still don't know who the boy on the left is. Now, could it be Mono? Maybe. Could it be the one of the children, the porcelain children? Maybe. I don't know. Um, it's just very interesting how you have two ends. And we do have a picture missing as well, which is really interesting because I don't know what that could be. But we have the two ends and we have it's almost like they're, they're contrasted or they're opposing each other. And that would... It'd be really interesting if this was six and mono because it would show how they're both sort of on opposite ends of something. And, and, and by the end of this game, six and mono are opponents. So it, I, I find that really interesting. It's also very interesting that there is a picture like this in the school of six. Now, I will say one thing. I use a lot of picture references in this in this uh, in my theories to say, oh, maybe someone was here because there's a picture of them now. Interestingly enough, you can find pictures of the other children all over the place. Of the, the comic book children, their pictures appear everywhere in this game. So that doesn't necessarily mean that six was here. But in this arrangement of five uh, lined out photographs on the wall, two of which being the porcelain children, or again, maybe the, the original children of the school, it kind of implies that these people were here. And again, we have a picture of six it, it really implies to me that six has been here before. It might not be six, but I do think there are other reasons to support why this absolutely is six. And the second of those reasons is this room right here. Now, at first glance on our first playthrough, you probably didn't really pay that much attention to this room, but I think there are a number of clues in here. The first one, if we look at the chair, somebody was clearly tied to this chair in this room. Now, if you look at the wall behind, it's clear that somebody was marking days. And I think this was probably the amount of days that they were stuck in this room for. Now, who else does that when they are trapped? That's right, Six. Six was marking the days at the beginning of the game. Now, we don't know if this is how many days she was trapped or how many days that she was choosing to stay there. We don't really know, but she was clearly marking the days of something. And I do think it's the amount of time she spent in both of these rooms. So this one, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I still believe this or not. So if you read the comics, there is the uh, Spoon Girl. I don't know what else to call her. Pigtails Girl, I guess. Uh, she's a little redhead with with the bloody nose and she has a, a spoon. And you see her in the hospital and she's digging her way out of a cell. And on the wall, you see a bunch of tally marks. Now, uh, every day, I think it is, she gets a new spoon thrown in and she digs her way into the next room. And when she gets into the next room, she sees the same thing. She sees all these tally marks. Now, that's already incredibly ambiguous and very interesting, and it leads to a, a number of different theories. But what really makes me think that it wasn't six in this specific room is that there's the spoon, and we know that she personally absolutely likes to dig her way out of things with spoons and mark things on the wall. Now, it's not necessarily her because we don't know. Six could do that as well. A lot of people have said, well, you know, just because one person likes to tally marks on the walls doesn't mean that nobody else does. And it is very interesting that the room that Six was held in, there doesn't seem to be anybody else in there, yet that has all the tally marks too. And it also seems to have some references to Very Little Nightmares. So it does seem that Six was also doing tally marks. But since I did the broken timeline theory which i still believe the timeline in the pale city is either a lot of people think it's a loop i think it's broken and i think it's all interlacing on top of each other um especially if you look at my later theories about there being multiple thin men as an example and and mono existing in two places at once that's not a time loop that that that's not how time loops necessarily work it could be but it, it it's, it's interesting I, you know so i feel like it's entirely possible, for example, that the, the the girl with the spoon has been in multiple different areas in different timelines or in different states, if you will. Now, maybe maybe one time she decided to go this way and this is how she got caught. Maybe a different time she went to the hospital and that's what we saw in the comic book. I definitely do think that there is an element of broken time here, almost like, like people are being reset. 
And if we look at the glitches, the glitching children, that kind of makes sense. They're glitching, but they, they almost exist in our reality, but they look like they're a shadow or a ghost of another reality. And I definitely think that there is this idea. And I, I, I gave the analogy of like, this is a TV show, right? If you watch episode two of Game of Thrones, but then you watch episode one of Game of Thrones, have you jumped in time? Not really, but you're watching them out of timeline order, right? And, and if we look at this entire city that is being corrupted by a TV, signal if you think about it that way it could be that we are watching almost like disjointed episodes of, of of little nightmares and you know maybe every all of these tally marks maybe they're not the amount of days they've been here but maybe it's the amount of times they've been through maybe the children are stuck in this infinite loop and this is the only way the only way that six got out was by dropping mono at the end i really like this idea that the everything in this world is so broken that even time doesn't work properly now, you might think that it was the porcelain children that were counting on the wall with this chalk, but if you actually look at what the children do write and do draw in the game, they never want to do this. They always seem to draw the eye or the signal tower. In fact, there are a number of examples of porcelain children having access to chalk, and yet they never ever seem to count. They always draw one of those two things. Now, if you think about that logically, six if she was here at one point, she very easily could have escaped and made her way to the island before she was captured by the hunter. Now, if you look at the way that we got in the school, the way that we got in the school was by climbing down this bed sheets that have been tied together. It's a, an obvious escape mechanism, right? And it's one that we've seen before. We saw this in the first game, the girl, the runaway girl, she managed to do the same thing. And that's how Six managed to climb up in the first game as well. I just want to point out one thing. I got a lot of comments in this one being like, uh, the runaway kid is a boy. Um, I'm, I'm actually clearly talking about, you can't see her cause my camera is in the way, but I'm talking about, uh, her, the girl there, the one that gets turned into a gnome. The reason why I call her the runaway girl, uh, in my opinion, it makes sense because we called the runaway kid who is a boy. We call him the runaway kid. But if you think about it, he was actually chasing after the girl at the very, very start of the DLC of Lil Nightmares 1. You are actually chasing after the girl, the girl who drops the bedsheet rope. So if we're the runaway kid because we're running away, but we're chasing her, it makes sense in my head that she's also a runaway kid, but she's just the, the runaway girl, right? The runaway girl and the runaway boy. It made sense in my head. I didn't make it clear in the video though. And a lot of people in the comments were like, he's obviously a boy. And I'm like, no, I'm talking about the girl who dropped the, the bedsheet rope, but so it's clear somebody has already escaped the school before the events of the first game. And I do think that that was six and maybe some other people. And I, I just want to, I want to just bring this back to what I was just saying about the broken timeline thing as well. Uh, it absolutely could have been the pigtail girl who escaped this way and went all, you know, went all the way to the, to the hunter's basement in one timeline or in one episode or in one part of the broken timeline and maybe she died there but then again got reset somehow and went back to the hospital in a different one it, it is entirely possible that, that we're seeing all these different fragmented timelines in one and one of the things that we have to remember is that we look at the game from a linear perspective like you go from left to right right and you start at the basement and you end up at the at the signal tower going left to right in a linear fashion but in the world it's more 3d so what we're seeing isn't necessarily a hundred percent accurate representation of the little nightmares world but it is also interesting that it seems like somebody was in the school and somebody made their way to the left, which the only way from here is to the Hunter's Island, and that person is no longer to be seen. So that still could be six. It could be the, the kid that we saw in the cage, or it could have even been the bloody nose girl and she died this way or she survived and ended up going back to the hospital. We don't know. There's so much we don't know. So those are the first parts of my theory. The school used to be normal, something happened and it became abnormal, and Six also used to study here before she left. Now, to continue this theory, I think this explains why Six is partially so aggressive. 
Now, if you look at this scene, if you choose not to kill this porcelain child, Six will creep up and will attack it. But she won't just attack the child, she does it in a very feral way. She jumps on top, she acts very similar to the porcelain children, and she does this kill animation which kind of shocks Mono. Even further to this, if you look at one of the lockers in the game, one of the lockers that has one of the static children in, there are two rats that are hung up by their tails inside the locker. Now, this could just be a callback to the first game. We remember that Six ate the rat, it was a big part of the first game, but it also could explain so much about this game. Now, the thing about Six being very feral and being very aggressive is actually really, really interesting if, if we delve into it a little bit more deeply. So now we absolutely know the timeline of Little Nightmares. We know it's been confirmed by Tarsia, so we absolutely know the order of the games. Now that order is very Little Nightmares, Little Nightmares 2 and Little Nightmares 1. So Little Nightmares 2 is confirmed a prequel to Little Nightmares 1, which also, in my opinion, adds more weight to the idea that this is a broken timeline, right? Little Nightmares 2 coming before Little Nightmares 1 doesn't make sense. But again, the timeline in Little Nightmares 2 is wrecked makes sense right but we see six in very little nightmares and if you've not played that game i would suggest you either go play it or it's on mobile or go and watch uh, one of the, the let's plays that are available on youtube there's plenty of them i'll leave a link down in the in the description below to one but you can see that six really tries to save the protagonist of very little nightmares she tries to save her even after the protagonist of very little nightmares betrays six so the protagonist in vln locks the door behind six when they're both being chased by i think it's the butler and she locks six out and then six even after that tries to save the protagonist of very little nightmares and what's really interesting is even though six does drop a boulder on the pretender she's not feral she's not like so aggressive now we don't know how much time has passed between very little nightmares and little nightmares 2 and again if you think about it as a broken timeline it could have been a hundred years honestly it could have been right so a lot of people have this idea that six went directly from very little nightmares from the nest to the hunter's island but we absolutely don't know that to be true now what's really interesting is if you look at six in the beginning of the game she looks beaten and broken and 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 she's she's very very much given up hope she just sat there she's not trying to escape she's lost her fire for for escape or a fire for her own survival now to me that implies that there has been a time between very little nightmares and little nightmares 2 and I do think that there is an idea that Six has had to survive somewhere and she's had to learn that scrappiness. And where else would she learn it than here? It makes so much sense that she would learn it from the school. Now, I don't necessarily ag agree that she has studied here, maybe, but she's definitely passed through at least because where else would she learn that fighting scrappiness from and who better to learn it from than these guys right if you're if you're surviving in a school full of these porcelain children and again somebody looks like they're surviving here because they're feeding on rats i don't think these rats were just being strung up for fun i think that they were being strung up to be eaten later and if you see that the child the glitched kid in the locker is hunched over he's very very scared and he's supposedly dead we think that they're dead right so it makes sense that people were trying to survive in this school. And if you're trying to survive in a school full of porcelain children who we don't actually know if the porcelain children would kill other children, but we know that they bully the hell out of them. We see that they, they, they string up six, but they don't actually kill six, which makes me believe that maybe even if they were to catch you, they wouldn't necessarily kill you. I don't. I don't know. I feel like the teacher would, but I don't think that the children would. But it, it makes sense in my head that Six has at least passed through here once. And that is where she learned how to, to fight in such a feral manner. And it also makes sense that she sees the little the little uh, floorboard. If you actually go up to the first trap where you step over the floorboard, she actually knows that it's there before you do. And she's, again, very, very aggressive like the bullies are. It just makes sense in my head. Spoiler, massive spoiler for the ending of the second game. There is a big theory that this is actually a prequel to Little Nightmares 1. And if you look at the secret ending, that kind of supports the idea that this is a prequel. Now, my theory here is that Six managed to escape this place, which means she, at one point she was trapped. We know that Six is human and she needs to eat food. 
Is it outside of the realms of possibility that while Six was trapped here, she had to do some horrible things in order to survive? That would absolutely set up parts of this game and Little Nightmares 1. For example, if she was surviving on whatever food she could find, maybe even rats, that would explain why she doesn't seem that phased by the idea of eating a rat in Little Nightmares 1. She's already done it before, right? And on top of that, the idea that she's had to to survive in this school with these bully children being incredibly aggressive and not particularly quite nice not particularly quite nice. Can you see why I now script my videos? But can you see what I'm talking about with with how these uh, the ones on the right are sort of like play fighting all the time? It makes sense that if, if if a child, a human child, were to try and make their way through this school and survive, it would make sense that they would have to very quickly learn to defend themselves. And I think that is possibly where Six learned how to be so scrappy. And again, it makes sense in my head that if she was surviving, and, and to be fair, the eating of the rat could have been anywhere in the Pale City, because we see in another one of the comics, we see another child who is, is actually eating rats to survive. So she could have learned that from anywhere, really. But uh, I don't know where else she would have learned this scrappy fighting nature from, unless, again, she had to fight off the, the viewers, but I don't, I don't personally see Six being able to do that. So it makes sense that Six has been at least in here once before explain why she's so scrappy in this game she's had to survive and anyone knows that people that have to survive in incredibly harsh environments often turn out to be a little bit aggressive one other piece of evidence that kind of supports the idea that there used to be human children in this school is the number of fires that you can see burning around the place. Now, there's a couple of fires in these little barrels, and there's also a pile of books that are burning. Now, it could just be that these people are burning things because they're naughty or burning the books because they want to get rid of some evidence or something. But I also kind of think that it points to the idea that somebody here was trying to keep warm. If you look at the game, it definitely appears to be set in winter. The place looks very cold. And Six also has a cough throughout the entire game. If you leave her alone in some of the outside environment, she definitely has a cough, which is probably the fact that she's been running around outside in the rain without a raincoat, but it's not outside the realms of possibility that Six used these fires to keep herself warm while she was spending time at the school. So I think that's another um, interesting thing because that could make sense. I don't see any evidence against it, but a couple of people have said the burning of the book sounds more like the uh, a reference to the children being empty headed. Now, the porcelain children, the bullies, whatever you want to call them, there's a metaphor there that they have empty heads, right? That you can call them stupid or naive or whatever. I think it's an interesting parallel that they could be burning the books because they don't care about knowledge because, again, they have empty heads. But it's interesting that there's a lot of those uh, bin fires around the school, too. It definitely feels like somebody was keeping themselves warm. But it's also interesting that they're still burning. But again, if we equate this to what I've said in later videos about the ashtray being lit still in one of the rooms where there's nobody around it's very interesting how a lot of things in this game seem to be stuck in time and that could be a reference to how mono is trapped inside the signal tower but it also could just be again the timeline is just broken so what in one part of a room there could be something that was lit five seconds ago but the rest of the room has been abandoned for decades you know it's it's interesting how the timeline doesn't seem to make sense in any of this this second game so Second part of the theory, Six had help escaping. This is the coolest part of the theory, in my honest opinion. If you look at this chess puzzle room, there is so much on offer here. If you poke... This still is my favourite part of the entire game, by the way, of Little Nightmares 2. This room was just an absolute treat to, to, to go through. And it has so much story in this room, and yet... Who knows what happened here? Now, obviously, I give my theory, uh, and I'm actually going to stick by a lot of what I said in my first original theory, but it is interesting how we'll never, ever really know what happened in this room, and I and I have some guesses, and I, uh, I have some new guesses as well, but we'll never really know. Around and look at what's on display here, I think this is one of the biggest secrets in the game. Now, if you look at this room at first glance, it just seems like a chess puzzle that we have to complete. And in the middle of this chess puzzle on the Black King, there is a porcelain doll tied to it with a crown strapped to his head. Now, if you look very, very closely at this porcelain child, I don't think this is a porcelain child at all. I think this is a human. I'm going to get into this. I'm going to I'm going to get through the what I say in my original theory, but I'm going to get through this. I still believe this to be true. I've had some people push back because they've used the first person mod and I'm going to get into why I don't actually think that's an acceptable counterpoint. Um 
But there's a lot of people who just don't seem to see what I see. And this child clearly is a porcelain child, or it's very similar to the other porcelain children. And I'm not saying that this child isn't made out of porcelain now, but there's a couple of things that really indicate to me that he wasn't always or that he isn't fully. First of all, look at his face. His face is squished. If you look at how squished it is on top of that chest piece, porcelain doesn't squish like that. Porcelain is solid. And if you look at any of the porcelain children, when you smash them with a ladle or whatever, they crack. He, his front face hasn't cracked. Now, some people have said that they saw blood on his face. I can't see any blood personally, but it does almost look like he's wearing a mask. And it's it's possible. It's possible that they put a porcelain child's head over a, a normal boy's head. But also that would be interesting then, because if this was made out of porcelain, why is his eyes closed? Again, no one, I've, I, I've had nobody, not in the comments, not any other videos that I've seen, I've not had anybody explain why this porcelain child's eyes are closed when none of the other porcelain children can close their eyes. They don't even have eyes eyelids and they can't close their eyes. I've had not a single good explanation as to how this child or this porcelain child, if he is porcelain, has his eyes closed. Now I said somebody used the first person mod to go and look around the back and they instantly dismissed this video by saying, oh well he is he is cracked at the back so he's clearly uh he's clearly made out of porcelain. That's actually not acceptable as a rebuttal and the reason why I say that's not acceptable is because Developers will cut corners when they don't have to develop something. And what I mean by that is they never expected you to be able to see the back of this child. So why would they go and spend development time creating anything around that? Now, in this example, they've clearly used, they've reused the asset, right? They've reused the asset of a porcelain child, whether that was on purpose or whether that was just for ease, who knows? But this is the only porcelain child in the entire game that we see who has its eyes closed. So either they've gone in and changed the eyes or they've used an asset that they didn't use anywhere else. But like I say, we can only look at what we can see in the game. Any sort of mods that change the camera angle or anything like that, I don't consider canon for the reason of the developers aren't going to develop something that they don't expect you to see. For for the reason why I'm not going to tidy this side of my bedroom to make it look nice on camera, if it's never going to go on camera. It's the same thing. And yes, my, my bedroom is very messy. So the point is, is while it's interesting to look through things like first person mods, I don't consider that a good enough counter to my point. I, I'm, I think people are going to have to work a little bit harder than that. And so far, I haven't seen a single good explanation as to why this kid has a has his eyes closed. I have a lot of evidence for this one and it gets very, very creepy. I'll tell you that now. But if you actually look at this room, this appears to be just a puzzle, right? And on the wall here, there is the solution to the puzzle. But if you look a little bit more closely, you can actually see that this black king is in checkmate. This is how you win chess. You position your pieces so that the other piece cannot move anywhere. It has no escape. Now, the reason why I think this is a human and not a porcelain child is very simple. This is the only child in the entire entire school that has its eyes closed. Now, if you look at the porcelain children and the teacher, they never once close their eyes. Now, if you look at the porcelain children, it kind of makes sense. They're made out of porcelain. I don't even think they have real working eyelids. Now, they can move and they can fight and they can do all of these things, but they never, ever blink. And in fact, the porcelain child that you kill and take his head so that you can sneak past all the others, if you look at him, his eyes haven't closed either. So, when they die, they don't close their eyes. So look at this one again. Why has this one closed its eyes when none of the others do? So uh, while we're on this zoom in as well, this is another good uh, good topic of point. So this chess piece puzzle, you have to take the, the heads of the chess pieces off and switch them around to recreate the checkmate that we have here. Now, there's so many layers to this. First of all, the, the kid being in checkmate, like I've said in the video, kind of makes sense that he lost. He's in checkmate. He lost the game. Second of all, uh, a lot of people have pointed out, and I agree with this, that his head has been jammed on to the top of the what should be the king, and then he has this little crown on top of his head. So in this way, they've made him the king, but that could also be a, a subtle reference that he is the king. Now, what would king mean? It could just be the leader of the bullies. You know, and again, it's again, I'm not saying it's impossible that he isn't a porcelain child because he might be, but he could be the king of the bullies or he could be the king of the school. 
And I still truly do. I believe that this child was the child that the, the bullies were made from. He was the blueprint. He was the, the original. Again, he was the king and all of the rest were, were pawns, if you will. They were just created after his image. Now, I think it's really interesting that, again, if you look at his face, you see that it looks very squished and you can see where it's been squished down on top of where you would put the the, the 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 head of the chess piece if you will uh, but they've jammed his head down on it and uh it definitely looks like his cheeks are squished like they've been squished down which doesn't doesn't scream porcelain to me yeah i still stand by this one it's still my favorite part of the entire game too perhaps because this one was the human boy that all of the other porcelain dolls were modeled after. If you look at all of the porcelain children, there's only a few of them and they all look very, very similar. It's almost like they've been sculpted after something, maybe like a blueprint. Now, my theory here is that all of the porcelain dolls were sculpted after normal human children. Again, go back to the picture that we looked at earlier. This picture looks very different to the porcelain children. It looks similar. You you can see this one a little bit better, but the um this picture appears a couple of times in the school. There's a boy and a girl, and they have the same features as the porcelain children, but they just look a bit different. Like the porcelain children have these really wide faces, and theirs are slightly narrower. Um narrower? More narrow? They're slightly more narrow, and they just look a little bit more alive. Now, they still look a bit monstrous, but I mean, let's face it, everything in this world is monstrous, right? So it's it's interesting how there's this there's this two photographs that have two bullies in. One is very different to the other. And we never really see bullies that look exactly like these two in the game either. So it just, I, I don't know, it gives me a little bit more evidence to my theory, I guess. But much more human-like. Is it possible that these were the original children? As a... Uh, that's actually a far better uh, close-up of what I was trying to say. If you look at the two on the left, they're really wide cheeks, right? Again, it makes sense. The porcelain children all have these really big, oversized heads. But if you look at the two on the right, their heads are far more uh, appropriate to the size of them. I, I, got, I Again, I've not seen anybody come out with any good explanation as to why we have these two different different photos. And one looks way more like normal children. And I mean... If you look at that one with the bullies on the left, there's also half of somebody in the background, which looks a bit different too, which is a bit creepy. And I've just noticed that. But uh, yeah, I still think the, the two on the right are absolutely the normal children who were here, who are not here anymore. And I think that the boy in this photo is the one on the, on the, on the chess piece. But then where's the girl? Where did the girl go? Is she one of the other six children in the comic in the in the comic books? Is she somewhere else? Is she going to show up in a DLC? Are we going to get a DLC? Who knows? I don't know that these porcelain dolls were modeled after. I think so. And I think that this little boy that we see tied to this chess piece was a very naughty little child. And that's why we see all of the porcelain children in this game act in a very naughty way. Yeah, I hear it. I say naughty a lot. Um, no comment. If you look at their behavior when left alone, these children are incredibly, incredibly naughty. Just doing... I, I can't stop hearing it now. Now I've said it, I can't stop hearing it. Things that most naughty children would... Just stop. Just stop saying it. Just stop saying it. I triggered like 2% of the watches of this video. Do. Now, when they are around the teacher, the teacher does not put up with this. In fact, even if they move just a little bit, she will slap her ruler down on the desk. She does not tolerate this stuff. But when the children are away from her, they are very, very, very naughty. Now, if we go back to this room, if you look at this room, there's a couple of hints here. There is a picture of the teacher with a number of darts thrown in it. There is a picture that has a mustache drawn on it. And then there is also a picture of a fox that appears to be doing some naughty business. Now, you can see these a few places. I just, I got to stop saying naughty. I have to stop saying naughty in my videos i can't i can't get away with it i'm gonna get demonetized the the fox here it looks like a fox to me some people say it looks like a dog either way uh, i think this was supposed to represent a kid misbehaving at school by drawing uh, an animal doing its business on a wall this, this is not something that you would expect a well-behaved child to do and i think that all of these hints are just again i keep saying naughty but these these it, these are hints that there was a very misbehaved child at this school and i do think still that the porcelain children were were modeled after or created after this 
misbehaving child, whether that's because whoever created them just thinks that's what children are like, or maybe that's because misbehaving children is just yet another one of the exaggerated bad behaviors in this world. You know, in, in Lot Nightmares 1, we had this over-exaggeration of, of hunger. In Lot Nightmares 2, we have this over-exaggeration of escapism. Maybe this is just another over-exaggerated uh, behavior that we see sort of amplified in this world around the school but the idea here is that this little boy was a very naughty boy how many how many times do i say naughty in this video can we get like a, a counter like a tally of how many times i say it and the teacher didn't like that one bit however this kid also managed to get out of the teacher's way he managed to escape and he escaped to one room however he got trapped here the teacher who had been hunting him for a long time finally trapped him in here and checkmate. So the reason why I said she trapped him is because of the 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 puzzle. When you solve the puzzle, the the, the bookcase is open and there's this chair in in a in a, in a what like a, a crawl space, I guess you could say. But there's nothing in there. And there's also a toy. I'm gonna actually scroll back a little bit. There's a, there's a toy on the floor too. I personally feel like that looks like a trap to me. It looks like a trap. The, the toy was in there. It was like a toy duck was in there. The the kid went in there to get it and then the, the door shut and trapped him. I think in the video I said that they probably starved to death. Maybe that's not true. Maybe they come and grab them afterwards. But I do think that there is this possibility that the there was a, a child in this school who was running rampant doing whatever they wanted and it, they finally got caught whether that was by the the bullies or by the teacher I, I don't know but it's just very interesting this this contraption in the wall just doesn't seem to make any sense not that anything in little nightmares makes sense whatsoever but it just really doesn't make sense that there is a, a chair and a toy and it closes like this with with no way to seemingly get out from the inside that definitely feels like a something uh, it feels like a trap and again the idea checkmate they lost right he's tied to this chess piece and that's why he's dead he starved to death tied to this chess piece again look at the eyes they're the only time you ever see a child with their eyes closed now further to this when you unlock the door there is a incredibly incredibly poignant and sad music that plays I really wish I had footage that didn't include me jumping around like an idiot. Uh, but th this recording that I did, this was my second playthrough. And this recording was me looking for secrets. So if you're wondering why I'm acting like an idiot in the in the footage, that's why. But um, the, the music here, not only is it really good, it really conveys something sinister to me. I, lo I love it. The score here, I, I think that's probably my favorite a piece of music in the entire game outside of maybe the hunter chase music i love that but the the, the the it just it tells you so much something happened here something sinister and i think that uh, not many people have really commented on the the music even though i think it's a key part of my theory and even though it doesn't prove anything necessarily, I think that it's very interesting that once we solve this puzzle, we get this very haunting, almost sad music. It has this sort of sad feeling to it. And that is deliberate. That is absolutely placed there. And again, this whole room to me just screams, this is important. You know, the, the, there's a trap, a dead porcelain child in the middle of it. And this, this music altogether just tells me that there was a story here. And even though we'll probably never know this story, I, I want to. I want to so badly. I so badly want to know what happened in this room. And man, Tarsia, if you can just, just I, listen, DLC. And I know you're not making it anymore, but like DLC, please. I need to know. I need to know what happened in this room. Make it happen. 
And at first, I didn't really get it. But if you think about all of that, this music makes so much sense. This little boy's fate was finally he got caught by the children and the teacher and it was game over for him. It was checkmate. The, de the delivery on some of the lines in this video makes me cringe a little bit. I, I feel like I've definitely improved in my in my uh, delivery since this video, and I think that's partly because I've started using scripts and partly just because I've gained confidence as a creator. But yeah, holy crap, the the w watching this is a little bit rough. You know, it's a little bit rough. I know it was my first theory, but whew, yeah, it's it's a bit rough. I think what's going on here was that this school originally had human occupants. Over time, the porcelain children and this monstrous teacher started to take over. Maybe the teacher warped into this monster, or maybe the porcelain children, there was only one or two of them, and more and more were added as time went on, and the school became more and more nightmarish as time went on, and the normal human children dis- I just, I, sorry, this is not relevant to what I'm talking about at all, but I've just noticed when I said earlier about six, um, being very feral, this is like the exact same animation that six does. If you look at here, this, this, um, this, this kill animation here is exactly how six kills the porcelain doll. Watch it, watch it again. She does that little leap on them and starts strangling them. Again, where did Six learn that from? Because she couldn't have learned it while we were here with Mono because she was strung up, right? So, interesting. And decided to try and escape. Now, the reason I think this is because if you actually see in the first island and in further parts of the game, you will actually see there seems to be a number of children that have somehow escaped this place and have seemingly died. At the first part of the game on the island, you can see that the hunter has caught this kid and he has also seemingly starved to death in this cage. Again, another human child that we've seen die. I don't know about this one because... I don't know if that is the school uniform or not, but if you look at the kid's face, his face looks warped. Almost like the colors leaching out of it, and that's very, very interesting. I don't know. I don't know if I'm overthinking this one a little bit, but yeah, I still don't fully know what the significance of this child is. Obviously, the hunter caught the caught the child, but he didn't do anything. He didn't he didn't use them for taxidermy, he didn't eat them. I don't know why I would think of eating them, but you know, some of the some of the monsters in this world are clearly very hungry. Um it's just kind of there for no reason. It's 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 almost like again, there's this idea that the monsters in this world are just following patterns that they've learned somewhere else. I think this human child escaped probably with six and managed to make it to this island before both of them were caught by the hunter. I have no evidence for that. Um it's possible. I have no evidence that Six and his child were ever together. Um, so completely, I disregard that one. That was a, I, I, yeah, I've got nothing. Whereas Six was brought to the house and for some reason this boy was caught in a trap. I don't know, but either way, multiple children seem to have escaped to this island and maybe this is why Six seemingly tries to then go back through the school because she knows there is no escape this way. She failed once before and now yet again she's now using Mono to try and escape but this time she's a little bit more clever about it. This is another one. Um, a couple of people have said, well, no, this bit's just a, a reference to it with the paper boat and the, the drain. Uh, and I th it is. I think it is an it reference. I think it's a sneaky little one. But we also uh, only see this paper boat twice in the game i think or maybe maybe a couple of times but we don't see it very often but we see it in the school and we see it here so whoever's making them it's almost like they have passed through this way and we don't know who that is but i definitely think kids have escaped the school before and i think that there were normal children in the school at some point now another bonus theory about the school i do think that even before this place succumbed to whatever happened with this world i do think that they were teaching children that if they're naughty i just i need to stop saying it how many times at this point 10 bad things will happen to them if you look in the attic you can see that this one porcelain child has a dunce's hat on his head now dunce's hat was something that were used in the, the real world a long time ago but if you look a little bit more closely this isn't a dunce's hat this is a gnome's head and in the next room you can see a bunch of them they are very very clearly the same shape and the same pattern as a gnome head now a couple of people have, uh, have tried to debunk this one by saying it's just a dunce's hat but 
I, I don't agree with that. Um, Dunce's Hat usually had a D on them. And also, if you look at the 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 bottom, like the rim of, of these hats, they have the little, little uh, like, nicks in them, I guess you could say. And they look very much like the gnome heads. Now, it could just be a, a nice little reference to the gnomes. It could just be the developers going, oh, we'll just throw a gnome reference in. However, I I think that the my theory is a little bit more sophisticated. And so I'm, I'm going to still believe that in my head. That the idea that there are people in this world that know about the gnomes. And we know this because we see pictures of the gnomes everywhere in this game they're all over the place they're even on packages so we know that people in this world are aware of gnomes or some people are anyway and we know that the lady can transform people into gnomes but we don't know that that's the only way that people turn into gnomes it could just be one of several ways maybe gnomes already exist and the lady chooses to turn people into gnomes because it's something that she's seen before or maybe gnomes in this world have another meaning that we don't know but either way i think the idea here that if children are naughty they're taught i'm saying it in this video i'm saying it in this video now if children misbehave the idea that they'll get turned into gnomes even like knowing that that's possible in this world like maybe it was one of those old folk tales right maybe it's like one of those old folk tales like if you if you pull a silly face and the wind changes your your face will stay like that forever i don't know if every country has that if that's just an english thing but those little sort of things that you tell to children, you tell them stories to uh, make them behave. If they behave badly, you tell them a story, something bad's going to happen to them. And uh, yeah, I like the idea of of if you misbehave, that you're going to get turned into a gnome. I think that's just a really cool little addition to this world. And it adds more weight to the idea that this world was normal or more normal at some point. I think that either this teacher or even maybe the previous teachers were teaching the children that if you're naughty... Add another one to the counter. You'll be turned into gnomes, much like we found out in the Residence DLC of the first game. Maybe it's just a callback to the first game, maybe it's just a little easter egg, but I do think that there is definitely merit here to this theory that people in this world absolutely know that it is possible for children to be turned into gnomes and that their teachers were trying to teach the children not to just a, a quick one some people have said that the man in this photo uh could be roger the janitor from the first game and it's entirely possible he's got the long wacky inflatable arm man arms um but he's also quite a big belly and i actually don't think that this is uh roger i think it's the doctor if you look at if you look at it from an upside down angle um it looks far more like the doctor to me uh like it looks like he's wearing like a lab coat and he's quite big and he's in if you imagine him hanging upside down with his arms out it just looks more like the doctor to me it could be roger i'm not saying that it isn't roger i'm just saying in my head it looks more like the doctor also that um very very sort of low res 2d gnome hat on the floor kind of annoys me um sorry tarsia to be naughty because if that's another naughty they were the same fate might befall them so that's my theory this once used to be a normal school that has been warped or twisted into a nightmarish version the once occupants of this school have fled some of them have died some of them got caught in their escape attempt and others managed to escape only to get caught by some other nightmare along the way so there we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit longer than my my usual videos and it's not exactly a theory, but uh, I thought this was really fun and really interesting. I actually really enjoyed looking back through this video and uh, like I say, some of my opinions have uh, changed since I made this video, but uh, a lot of them I still think could be true and I really do think that the chess piece kid is more important than a lot of people realize and I, I'm so glad that I made this video and I'm so glad that a bunch of people got to uh, watch it and view it and enjoy it and and make their own theories up and uh, I really hope we do get more content so I can make more little nightmares theories even though I have a couple more on the way so if you've made it all the way to this part of the video there you go that's your reward um, I am working on a couple more little nightmares theories good ones like actual theories not like this but uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed so much if you did please let me know by liking the video and let me know down in the comments below and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already because you know I do make I make lots of theory videos sometimes on little nightmares sometimes on other games but either way I hope you enjoy them thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time